Hey everybody, Tom Flynn here and you're watching TMI, that's Two Minute Interviews on LinkedIn. And today we're going to be tackling a very important discussion about how to best manage your remote employees. This is a discussion that's taken on some significant importance of late as everybody has been uh, forcing themselves into self-quarantine or shelter in place based on the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, so what I've done today is I brought in an expert, uh, Tori Fika, who's the senior copywriter at Bamboo HR. Tori, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. All right, Tori, let's just get right into it. Um, I, I saw an article that you wrote a uh, little over a year ago, end of 2018, um, and it was entitled Best Practices for Managing Remote Employees. Um, it's about the best uh, article that I've seen on the topic, and I'm putting a link to it in this LinkedIn post for anyone who wants to do a little bit more research. Um, but let's talk about, in your view, how can managers keep their team on the same page while everybody has recently moved to their home office or to a remote location? Mm -hmm. So I wish there were like some magic trick, but I feel like all the advice is pretty common sense. I mean, it's really just about communication. Um, and that's, you know, really the crux of it. Uh, and I think managers can help facilitate that communication and make sure that it's happening in the way that it needs to happen and, um, you know, when it needs to happen. So, you know, just doing things like setting up expectations uh, and, and rules for, you know, the whole team that everyone can buy into and get behind and understand. Um, for example, on my team right now, with all of us remote, we, you know, have, uh, we've decided and agreed to all check in on chat by, you know, 930 every morning, just even just say, hey, good morning, mm -hmm. you know, here's what I'm working on. And then every other day we do a video call to just see each other's faces and, and talk and, um, that's an opportunity also where we can collaborate. I think with teams that are used to collaborating, um, you know, face to face, that can be especially challenging to be remote because you can't just pop over to another person's desk and ask a question or say, Hey, what do you think of this? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting, getting on video calls, not being shy about, about being proactive. It can feel a little weird and different at first, but um, managers especially can set that example and, both in how they interact with their team, but also, um, you know, in, in how they encourage their team members who do kind of follow that example, like make a show of saying like, you know, thank you for checking in and, and let them know that you appreciate their efforts in trying to, you know, facilitate this new form of communication. Um, and kind of along with that, I think, uh, you know, over communication is really should be the rule when you're kind of working remote because mm -hmm. trust is also super important with remote work because you can't look over at someone's desk and see that they're working. So if they don't respond on chat um, immediately, it can be easy to just jump straight to the assumption that, you know, what, well, what are they doing? You know, why, why aren't they responding? Are they really working mm -hmm. over there? And right. um, <laughs> so managers can do a lot in helping to ease that, that, you know, like little seed of doubt in people's minds mm -hmm. um, by over communicating, you know, let people know, hey, I'm stepping away for 15 minutes. You wouldn't normally do that in a workplace, you know, you would just get up from your desk and take a quick break. But, you know, I'm getting I'm getting up from my desk for 15 minutes, I'll be back, I'm taking a walk, I'm going to go run a quick errand, whatever. Um, but just stating that can already can get rid of that perception, or that doubt you know, that, oh, I don't know where they are. And, you know, why aren't they working as hard as I'm working or whatever it might be. So I think managers really need to kind of set the example and then the teams will follow. Um, you, you mentioned at the beginning of that, that this would all be common sense and simple. Um, I think, I think that is okay, maybe, but I think there's a lot of new information in that. That's, th those are tips that the minute you say that it's, it's so recognizable to me that you have to have that trust you you touched on trust. I mean, some of that was tactical uh, check in meetings, etc. But trust is key. Uh, you know, we're not we're not all robots in this case. I mean, there's going to be a huge emotional element of it. It's a really um, scary time for a lot of people too. So more than just facilitating team communication, what does a manager need to do to make sure that their staff is accounted for emotionally during this time? Yeah, I think that's almost more important, especially mm -hmm. right now than 
you know, the tactical, like when you hold your check-ins and stuff, um, because not everyone, you know, a lot of employees have had to shift to working from home unexpectedly. So maybe they don't have an ideal, you know, home office setup, or maybe they were only working from home, you know, one day of the week, like I was. So it's not entirely, you know, different for me, but it's, it is still hard to not go in and see people and so I think everyone is kind of at varying levels of discomfort, <laughs> maybe, mm-hmm. maybe except for the people who have already been working full time remote, and then it's just sort of more of the same. But I think managers need to um, be proactive in checking in with their people on like an emotional level and letting them know that, um, you know, that that you as a manager are someone that your employees can reach out to, to just like talk with and, and you know, if they don't have anyone else as support to kind of help them through this, um, not that you have to be, become everyone's therapist, but, you know, just let them know that you're here for them as like a human being. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that can come in the form of sharing your own challenges in working from home, you know, maybe share some ideas for what you've come up with that's been working or, you know, wow, it's, you know, isn't it, isn't it tough to, you know, not see each other, like just kind of commiserate um, and show that, that your employees who might be feeling that way aren't alone. Um, and then on top of that, I think it can help to maybe shift the focus away from how much stuff everyone can get done, um, which is kind of the typical focus of like a normal workplace. Not that you want your employees to stop working, you know, you want everyone to kind of keep moving forward, but I think it's worth recognizing that not everyone is going to be as productive as they might be as, as we kind of all move through this adjustment period. And that that's okay. <laughs> like, you know, the world is not going to end because yeah. you didn't get everything on your to-do list checked off. And, and to let your employees know, like, hey, you know, we're all figuring this out together. It's okay. You know, just like do what you can. Um, and I, I actually read a quote from a Harvard Business Review article recently that um, was talking about like to-do lists and being productive. And basically they recommended don't don't get to the end of the day and ask yourself, what did I accomplish today? But ask yourself, how did I contribute today? And I think that's really important to keep in mind during these times as well, because sometimes you won't get every assignment checked off, but did you contribute by, you know, supporting someone else, helping someone else with their project, checking in, being an emotional support, and those things matter too. Tori, that's fantastic information. And I noticed you mentioned uh, the Harvard Business Review, um, which reminds me in the article that you had written, you had also referenced a a report, which I'll put on screen right now, also by the uh, Harvard Business Review, which showed across the board, across several categories, that remote employees were always more likely to feel left out or alienated as as opposed to um, on-site or on-premise employees. So now that everybody's forced into that frame, um, I feel like a lot more people are going to be feeling like they're a little bit out in the cold. So it, it adds even more weight to a lot of the advice that you're giving today. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, Tori, th- this has been great. I can't thank you enough. Uh, such an important topic, and uh, it's great to get a chance to spend some time with an expert um, in this discussion. Um, so everybody, uh, thank you for joining for either watching at home or maybe listening in the car um, or watching at the office if there's still a few of it uh, at the office. Um, my name is Tom Flynn, and I want to thank uh, Tori Fika so much for spending some time with me today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, this has been another episode of TMI. That's two-minute interviews on LinkedIn. <laughs>